So, chapter one, uh, understanding value education. We all want to live fulfilling lives. We want to be happy and make others happy. We used to pick up values, that is, what is important in life, what is right, what is wrong, what to do, what not to do, as a human being to live a fulfilling life. The day-to-day -day interactions in the family, in community, and society in general used to help us develop our values. Today, all these institutions have been severely compromised. Nowadays, we tend to pick up our values from, from sources like uh, social media. Strengthening or reviving family and other social institutions may take quite a while. In the time being, educational institutions can play a vital role in providing a comprehensive uh, understanding of human values by developing a so holistic, humane world vision, which is in the interest of living in living a fulfilling life. This book presents the subject matter for a foundation course in value education, which can become a regular part of the current curriculum. In this course we shall be discussing certain fundamental issues which are important to all of us in our lives, issues which directly relate to our happiness, our well-being and welfare, our goals, aspirations and our relationships. Value education deals with something that is universally valuable to all of us, that is conducive to our individual and collective happiness and prosperity. Let us first start with appreciating the need, the expanse and implication of such a subject. Living a Fulfilling Life Each one of us aspires to live a fulfilling life. We have our own visions of a, of a fulfilling life. We may include earnings, lot of money, gaining power, attaining recognition, touring the world, having a loving family, ensuring harmonious relationships inside and outside the family, maintaining a healthy body and so on. At the same time, we expect the environment to be pollution free, society to be peaceful, free of crimes and an abundance of natural resources. Over here, just pause to make a list of all that you require to live a fulfilling life. Student life is expected to be the preparation for such a life. Now, it remains to be seen whether we really understand what a fulfilling life is. Can it be understood with definitiveness? Or we all always have to plan just the next phase of life in an ad hoc manner? Without being clear what we really want to be, can it be understood through education? Can a formal course be a hell on such issues? Or will these always have to be dealt with at a personal level in bits and pieces? In order to find satisfactory answers to all these concerns, let us begin with understanding what a fulfilling life means. As a proposal, just see if the following cater to a fulfilling life for you. Like, there is a feeling of happiness within you all the time. Your body is in good health. You are able to have what you require in terms of physical facility. And you have a feeling of prosperity all the time. 
you have good relationships with everyone connected to you there is a peace and harmony in the society around you you are able to coexist with the nature and make effort for an environment in which there is no pollution or depletion of resources and you are able to understand the salient aspects of your own reality as well as the rest of existence as it is see if all your desires fit in the above scheme or is there something more that you require for fulfillment also check if every complaint that you may have to do with the lack of physical lack of fulfillment in one or more of these of course if something is redundant about it can be dropped this is essentially what we have been aspiring for regardless of whether you have been successful in achieving it or not Similarly look back in into your own actions and check whether you have been making effort to achieve this or not reflect on this at the at the individual as well as at the collective levels at the level of your family your neighborhood your village city your country and so on thus you will see that this basic aspiration is common to all you are not the only one who aspires for a fulfilling life but everyone else too now if this happens to be a universal need of all human beings would there not be a common program for its fulfillment so think over it education for a fulfilling life to understand what a fulfilling life means and to understand the program to ensure it there is need for appropriate education education is expected to be a process which prepares us to lead such a life and only with such an expectation a human being invests invests merely one fourth to one third of one's lifetime in the process of being educated while going through education if we have the opportunity to get a holistic perspective about life and existence the decisions taken by us will open channels for a happy and prosperous life at this stage of life while completing one's education it is needful to gain clarity about what we really want to be and to acquire competence to actualize it in life visualizing clearly how one would like to see oneself say 20 years hence and further take the case of relationship harmonious relationship is one important aspect of a happy life today with fast life and changing social structure sustaining harmonious relationships has become a challenge another important aspect is physical well-being and wealth as you enter higher education you may have two major milestones in front of you career and marriage can there be some program which can help you choose your career and spouse prudently these are issues which may be of concern to each one of you further all of us live in a society we are anyway related to the society in fact we are related to the whole world around us we want fulfilling relations with all even if there is a single relationship in which we find it difficult to ensure mutual happiness or mutual fulfillment there appear to be only two options before us either to ignore and forget the other or to feel stressed both of these options do not provide a mutually fulfilling solution can our education address such issues most of the time it is found that youth read various books discuss with friends 
listened to talks and discourses to seek solutions to such issues which at times start appearing unsolvable. As a result, many of us are compelled to adopt piecemeal solutions, but that too has its own limitations. Our society is of prime concern to us as our job or career or family are strongly connected to the society. When we get to know about negativity in day-to-day -day incidents around through the newspaper or news channels or social media, we start feeling more and more insecure and fearful. But this is not what we desire. Just ask yourself, do you want a fearful society or a fearless society? What is naturally acceptable to you? What is it that you aspire for? Next comes the nature around. We do feel agonized when we feel, hear that pollution is rising, Earth's atmosphere is becoming warmer and warmer day by day, water table is going down, sea level is rising and coastal areas are sinking, food is getting contaminated, etc. Nowadays, we keep getting such messages on our gadgets every day. Certainly, this is neither good for us, the human beings, nor for the rest of the nature. It may also be observed that on this earth, it is only the human beings which goes through a long process of education in the family, in the formal education system and in the society. Formal education has been accepted as a basic human right. Parents are motivated to send their children to schools and colleges. There is adequate institutional and learning infrastructure. Teachers have been appointed and students are coming in fair numbers. All this effort has resulted in significant development of skills and information. Yet, it is the human being only who is creating so many problems on this planet. If one does not feel fulfilled within oneself, he or she cannot be fulfilling for others too. What remains to be addressed adequately in the present education system is this important aspect that is fulfillment in human being. As a human being, we have two important questions to resolve. One, what to do? And two, how to do it? A holistic education basically has to address both these aspects adequately. The domain of education which addresses the issues related to what to do is called value education. It gives us the clarity of our goal, our basic aspiration and the program to fulfill the basic aspiration. The second domain which addresses the issues related to how to do is called skill education. It helps us learn skills, methods and techniques to implement the program. Both are essential and complementary components of education and need to be addressed appropriately. Value Education Looking at the list of aspirations for a fulfilling life which we discussed earlier, one can make out that ensuring such a life necessitates that we understand ourselves and everything around us. Clearly, identifying our relationship with everything around when we try to fulfill our relationship with the other human being or any entity in the rest of nature that defines my participation in the larger order, this participation constitutes the domain of human values. The value of an entity is its participation in the larger order of which it is a part. For example, the value of a marker is that it can write on the whiteboard in the classroom. Here, writing is the participation of the marker in the classroom, which is the larger order. As long as the marker can write, it is of value. Otherwise, it is not of value. Similarly, one value of a 
vegetable plant is that it can provide nutrition to the body of a human being. What is the value of a human being then? This question implies what is the participation of a human being in the larger order? For example, if your participation in the process of education is to understand what is being taught, your value is to make that effort. The value of a human being is its natural or expected participation in the larger order. At the level of the individual, at the level of the family, at the level of the society and ultimately the level of nature existence. It is interesting to note that you feel happy in the process of fulfilling your participation in the larger order. This, In this example, if you understand what has been taught, you feel happy. The teacher also feels happy when you participate in understanding what is being taught. For a human being, this bigger order includes other human beings, plants, air, water, soil, animals, birds, etc. That is the entire nature existence. The value of a human being is its participation in this entire nature existence. Hence, to understand human values, we need to study the human reality along with all that is there in the entire nature and existence, which constitutes the larger order. The role of the human being is to understand and fulfill its relationship with each and every unit in the existence. To understand human values, there is need for, for value education. We need to explore and understand things as they are so that we are able to fulfill our participation in them. The part of education that deals with the understanding of one's participation in the larger order, thus ensuring it in living, is called as value education. It forms the basis of the rest of education as well. Ultimately, the whole education needs to be value-based. If it is not value-based, it will not serve to fulfill the basic aspiration of the human being, that is a life of fulfillment. It can at most provide skills to a person to fulfill the need of physical facility or so to say make money but basic desire will remain untouched. A simple appraisal of the current state of affairs shows that our lives has become more focused on making money rather than ensuring a fulfilling life. This deficiency needs to be rectified by making education wholesome and conducive to a fulfilling life. Skill education Skills, technology, management, medicine, etc. are necessary in our life. Skills have been developed to such a fine extent in every area, in medicine, in production, in construction of buildings, bridges, in all kinds of transportation, from bicycles to aeroplanes, in telecommunication and television, to name a few. This list is very large. Skills are definitely required. However, along with skills, it is essential to decide the purpose for which they are to be used. Can you see that? Complementarity of values and skills. Let's reflect upon a few questions to understand the complementarity of values and education. Did you use your communication and management skill for dominating over others or for fulfillment, making friends? 
will you use your medical skill for profiting from disease or for ensuring long term health will you use your financial skills for ensuring equitable distribution of wealth or for profit maximization for a few will you use skills for nurturing others or for exploiting others and exploiting nature will you use the communication facilities that has been developed particularly the mobile phones with extensive options for providing human education to the people or for promoting consumerism and indulgence we can see that skill is important but it is more important to see the purpose the skill is used for we can see that skills are only a means to achieve a given purpose by skills are required to achieve a particular purpose in an effective and efficient manner it is not within the scope of technology management medicine etc to decide the purpose this decision lies outside its scope it does becomes important to identify our purpose as human beings without this decision skill skills can be endless directionless and can therefore be put to any use for constructive or destructive purposes for instance students of technology will be studying creating and implementing technologies if we are getting trained on technology without deciding the purpose of human being their technical skills could even prove counterproductive when used to dominate exploit or harm others we develop technology for harnessing atomic energy or nuclear energy now how much of it has been used for welfare purpose and how much of it has been used for destructive purposes it seems that we have generated enough nuclear weapons to destroy this earth 30 times needless to say that one cannot destroy the earth more than once taking another example suppose we get convinced that for a happy life the health of the body is the basic requirement now we will learn skills to keep the body healthy skills such as learning which food will keep the body healthy which physical practice will keep the body functioning properly what would be the possible ways to do certain kinds of work with the body now all these fall under the domain of skills but along with that it is crucial to understand for what purpose we shall be using our body and this comes under the value domain as explained above values and skills have to go hand in hand there is an essential complementarity between the two for the success of any human endeavor towards the goal of living a fulfilling life priority of values over skills as elaborated above values are required to decide what to do by while skills are required for how to do when now when we ask ourselves what would be the priority order it is easy to see that what to do has to be decided first and then only we can think of how to do rather than the other way around can you see that for example if you were to go to a railway station and ask for a ticket the clerk would ask you where you want to go but if you keep telling the clerk that you want the fastest train the most comfortable train the best air conditioned train all that will it work what that is how many of the things we are doing today are happening 
We are working out ways and means to go fast, to travel at supersonic speeds. But are we clear about where we want to go and what we will do when we reach there? And if that will lead to our fulfillment or not? It is an important question that must be kept in the forefront of whatever we think and do. Thus, can you see that values have a higher priority over skills, even though both of these are essential for human welfare? The need and important implications of value education. Having explored the complementarity and higher priority of value education in tandem with skill education, we shall now highlight some of the important implications of value education to further substantiate its need. These include the following. Correct identification of our goals. Value education helps us to identify our goals appropriately. The questions such as the following need an authentic answer which can only come through value education. Can the goal of a human being be to accumulate as much wealth as possible or to ensure a prosperous life? Are accumulation of wealth and prosperity the same thing or different? Can the goal of a human being be to work just for sensual pleasures and that too in continuity? Is the sensual pleasure and happiness the same thing or is it something different? Is our goal decided within our oneself or by looking at others? There are so many issues such as the ones mentioned above that we are struggling with. This leads to a state of dilemma. Deciding our goals with definiteness become a difficult task. In the successive chapters, we will start exploring into all these issues one by one systematically. It will help to develop the basis for you to decide your goals by yourself and not under the influence of others. Just think that if your goal is also not your own but borrowed from others, will its achievement be fulfilling to you? Hence it is important that at this stage of your life you are able to correctly make out your goals with confidence. As we proceed further, we will see that with the understanding of the human being, the nature and the harmony in the relationship, it will be possible for us to know our participation as human being in every sphere of our living and therefore understand our purpose, our goal appropriately. This calls for developing a holistic perspective. Development of a holistic perspective. The outcome of value education is a holistic perspective with the clarity about human being, the one who understands, about the nature and existence of which we are an integral part as well as our participation in this nature and existence. This participation is our role, it is our purpose, it is our right, it is our responsibility and it is our value. In terms of day-to-day -day living, it means that we are able to see our role with respect to ourselves, with respect to the family, with respect to the society and with respect to the nature and existence. The figure given below explains that. We can also see that we feel happy when we fulfill our participation at any level. In the figure, the central circle denotes the individual. It says, I have a role within myself. And the example says, ensuring happiness in the self and health in the body. The next outer circle denotes the family. And it says, I have a role in my family. For example, ensuring feeling of relationship and prosperity. 
and the third outer circle or the next outer circle denotes the society where it says I have a role in the society example is to participate in social systems for ensuring justice peace and harmony and the fourth and the last outer circle shows the nature and existence here it says I have a role in nature and existence and the example says mutual fulfillment with the rest of the nature this figure denotes the interconnectedness and participation in the larger order we are interconnected interrelated in this existence from the smallest level to the whole cosmos there is a chain of connectedness with mutual fulfillment at every level with a holistic perspective we are able to see every little part of it we can also see that our own existence is by virtue of this mutual fulfillment it is the same for other human beings as well as all the units in nature like water air plants and animals the rich biodiversity is fulfilling for us and is readily available to us without any effort from our side. It is like a gift of mutual fulfillment. All the wisdom, information and skills which the long human tradition has developed are also readily available to us without any effort from our side. This also develops a deep sense of gratitude for the society and ultimately for the whole existence. In the light of the holistic perspective, we can understand that the nature or the existence is in harmony and there is a relationship among all the units of nature, including human beings. We can now perceive that the harmony, the relationship is the running thread across all that exists, across all the units in nature from a single atom to the whole cosmos. We can now see that, in fact, all these units from atoms to cosmos are the expressions of this harmony and relationship at different levels. Clarity of program to live with holistic perspective. We are all faced with many questions regarding our program of living such as what thoughts are naturally acceptable to me with which I would like to continue? What food will keep my body healthy? Which clothes will fulfill the need of my body better? What behavior with my friends will sustain our relationship? How can I be a help to the other in my family? How can I participate in the college or neighborhood or the society at large? so that there is mutual fulfillment? What my role can be in maintaining the harmony of the environment which includes trees, air, water, etc.? We all have such concerns and we keep struggling with confusion about all these aspects and the notions vary from person to person. Can we get a vision, a program that can be holistic as well as universal? This will give us the clarity to work out the day-to-day -day programs. Value education provides us the vision which helps us to get answers to all these questions. We can see that this clarity of program is necessary for our own state of happiness. Evaluation of our beliefs our conduct depends on what we understand or believe about ourselves, our family, the society and the nature around. Value education also helps us become aware of our own beliefs. Much of our behavior or working is based on beliefs about which we are ourselves quite unaware of. These somehow become the guiding factors of the decisions of our life. Hence, it is important to evaluate our own beliefs sincerely. Of course, all beliefs are not wrong, but there, are, there may be many that are. 
For example, if you believe that earning money is the ultimate goal of life and sensual pleasures are the only sources of happiness, we make effort for accumulating money and indulging in sensual pleasures as much as possible. Like that, there may be many different beliefs and based on these beliefs, different programs for fulfillment. One of these beliefs could be that the very design of nature is such that there is struggle for survival and the survival of the fittest and that human beings have to struggle their way through life. With this belief, invariably we think in terms of competition instead of cooperation with human beings. We may even think of domination which may ultimately lead to fighting and even war. We may think in terms of accumulating more and more physical facility. For this, we think of exploitation and mastery over the rest of nature instead of ensuring mutual enrichment. This may ultimately lead to resource depletion and environment pollution. We can see that the major problems that we see today in the society have their seeds in the wrong beliefs that we have in us about ourselves and about the rest of nature. Do you know for sure what exactly your beliefs are about human being and about this nature existence? Is there a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest in nature? Is the cosmos in harmony or heading towards chaos? A belief is an assumption which we are not sure of, but since it has been reinforced over and over again, we also tend to hold it and repeat it. Inside, we also don't know, we are not sure also. On the other hand, understanding means knowing without doubt what it actually is. At the collective level, the culture and civilization are characterized by the understanding or belief about these two entities, one about the human being and the other about the nature and existence. The society propagates its understanding or beliefs through education to the next generation. Of course, here education means all the inputs that an individual absorbs from the family, the school or college, as well as the larger society through people, practices, festivals, media, etc. Find out if you are getting these inputs. Find out if you are drawing some conclusions out of these inputs. Find out if you are setting your goals with these inputs. Solution of existing problems. If we understand our participations and live by them in the complete expanse of our human being, that is from ourselves to family, to society and to the entire nature, it will lead to a fulfilling life for ourselves and fulfilling for all around. The problems including wrong beliefs are mainly because we do not have understanding and we are not making enough effort for it. Once we have a holistic perspective and the clarity of the program to live by it, we are able to realize that most of the existing problems are actually symptoms and consequences of our wrong beliefs. Then in due course of time, we will be able to root them out not only at the personal level but also at the family level, in our workplace, at societal level and in our interaction with the rest of nature. With right understanding of things, we are better able to define our role in different phases of life and work accordingly. One thing that happens with such inputs is that 
we do not create problems for ourselves or others. Secondly, we are able to resolve the existing problems at different levels of our being. And thirdly, we are able to lay down a program, whatever be the scale which does ensure fulfillment for all. Thus, we are able to appreciate in the collective fulfillment of the society around. Development of Ethical Competence Ethics is the expression of definite human conduct in one's behavior, work or participation in the larger order. It is easy to appreciate that the core purpose of value education is to develop ethical competence among human beings which will reflect in all their pursuits. The problem of unethical conduct in various professions which is becoming a grave menace almost everywhere can also be tackled effectively by focusing attention on development of ethical competence through human value education. We shall discuss in detail about the salient implications of value education in context with professional ethics in the third section of the book. Guidelines for value education Now that we have identified the need and implications of value education, let us visualize certain effective and widely accepted the guidelines which will enable the introduction of value education in the present academic system. Given below are the broad guidelines. Universal Whatever we, we study as value education has to be universally applicable to all human beings and be true at all times and all places. This implies that it should not change depending upon sect, creed, nationality, gender, etc. It has to deal with universal human values. For example, the feeling of respect in relationship is something universal. So it can be a part of value education. Second guideline is rational. Rational, it has to be amicable to reasoning and not based on dogmas or belief, blind beliefs. It should be open to address the related questions. It cannot be a set of sermons or do's and don'ts. Next is natural and verifiable. We want to study something that is natural to us. Being natural means it has to be acceptable in a natural manner. When we live on the basis of such values that are natural to us, it leads to mutual fulfillment. It leads to our happiness and it is also conducive to the happiness of other people we interact with as well as enriching for other units in nature. We all want to verify these values ourselves. That is, we don't want to assume something just because it's been stated here. Rather, each one of us wants to verify these to find out whether they are true for us. This can be done by both checking for validity within ourselves as well as something which can be implemented in our life, in our living and observe its outcome. All encompassing. The content of value education has to cover all dimensions of our being, that is, thought, behavior, work, and understanding, as well as all levels of our being, that is, individual, family, society, and nature existence. It is not merely an intellectual exercise or information transfer. Next guideline is leading to harmony. Finally, value education has to enable us to be in harmony within and in harmony with others. Hence, 
When we live on the basis of these values, we start observing that it leads to harmony in us and harmony in our interactions with the other human beings and the rest of nature. Content of value education We have seen that the value of human being is the participation of the human being in the larger existential order. Hence, to understand human values, we need to study human being along with all that is there in existence. The role of human being is the relationship with each and every uh, unit in the existence. That means the scope of study has to be all encompassing, that is, it covers all dimensions of human being, thought, behavior, work, and realization. It covers all levels of human living, that is, individual, family, society, nature, and existence. Accordingly, the content of value education has to be to understand human being, human aspiration, happiness, understand the goal of human life comprehensively, understand the other entities in nature, the innate interconnectedness, the harmony in nature and existence, and finally the role of human being in the nature and existence. Hence, it has to encompass Understanding of harmony at various levels, namely individual, family, society, nature and existence. And finally, le learning to live in accordance with this understanding by being aware of one's thought, behavior and work. Process of Value Education Self-Exploration Human values can be understood by an appropriate process of self-discovery because they are potentially there in each and every human being. There is already a natural acceptance for values in human beings. It is only that we have to discover them or become aware of them. For example, if you are asked what is naturally acceptable to you, the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition, with the other members of your family? Just observe with them for the answer. The natural response is feeling of relationship. This feeling of relationship is a value for us. In this discussion, this feeling was not created in you. You already had the acceptance for it. It was only uncovered by drawing your attention within to the question for Exploration. Hence, to study human values, the process has to be such that it develops the process of self exploration in you. Taking every statement as a proposal, you are able to investigate the reality for yourself. Value education is not a set of do's and don'ts or a set of sermons. It rather is a process of self-exploration and self-investigation. This will be further elaborated in the next chapter.